Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Improve performance and reduce stutters with dynamically changing level of detail. Coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. So what exactly is level of detail in Microsoft Flight Simulator? But more importantly, how can it improve our performance? First off, we have to understand that Microsoft Flight Simulator is a very CPU bound game. Now, it may not look like that if you open up your task manager and actually look at the amount of CPU usage. The issue with Microsoft Flight Simulator is that it is built on the old FSX technology and it only utilizes one core of your CPU thus making it appear that your CPU is not being used at all, but in reality, it is probably pegging out one of your CPU cores. Now, one of the settings that I always talk about in all of my settings guides is to decrease your level of detail in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Level of detail is not going to increase clarity or sharpness of the image, what they really should call this is render distance. So what this actually does is as you increase the level of detail slider, you increase the distance in which the scenery is rendered on your screen. So that means the higher the level of detail, the farther out you'll be able to see, the lower the level of detail, the less you will be able to see way out in the distance. So how does this affect CPU usage? Level of detail is highly weighted on the CPU. So your CPU needs to render the images first before they get sent to your GPU for processing. So by lowering your level of detail puts less impact on the CPU. So the best thing to do to increase performance on the ground at the airport is to turn our terrain level of detail all the way down and that will greatly improve the smoothness of the sim on the ground as well as on our takeoff. It can also help us on landings. In today's video, I will go over the download and install for the dynamic level of detail application. I will then show you how to set up the application and give you some pointers for setting it up for your preferences. This will work for either VR or monitor. If you have any questions throughout today's video, please leave them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoy today's content, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. All the links for today's video will be down below in the description, so be sure to check that out. When you click on the link, it will bring you up on this GitHub page. It has some really good information down here in the README section, as well as some requirements that need to be installed on your system. Now don't worry. It's going to do all of this for you. You don't have to worry about installing anything extra. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to head over to the releases section and click on the latest button. This will bring us to the latest release of the application. We're gonna head all the way down to the assets section and then click on the dynamic LOD installer. Once you have finished the download, go to the location of the download and run the installer application. When you run the installer, it will give us several different options for configuring the startup of the dynamic LOD application. Hovering over each of these will give us a brief description as to what it does. For me, I do not like to configure any auto startup, so I'll select remove auto startup or just do not configure and then hit install. It will then provide you with the status of the installation. Once it's finished, it'll say finish successfully and then we can close out of this window. Once you have the application installed, you will be left with an icon on your desktop that looks just like this. To open, we're gonna double click. Let's start off in the general section right here below. This is where we're gonna be able to set up different user profiles. If we tick on the dropdown by user profile, you will see it allows us to choose up to three different profiles. Each of these profiles can be set up for either VR or monitor. To set up this profile as a VR profile, you must tick on the VR profile checkbox next to the profile number. When you switch profiles, it will then switch to the correct visual device, either monitor or VR. 
We also have an option to reset the terrain level of detail after your session. This is all personal preference. On the right hand side, we also have an option to open the window on the application start. If you want the user interface to automatically open when you start the application, then just tick on the box here and this user interface will open up. Below that, we also have an option to reset the object level of detail after each session. Again, this is personal preference. At the bottom of this application is where we can set up various terrain and object level of detail levels. Now, before we start tweaking any of this, you first need to understand that the dynamic level of detail application will change the level of detail in the sim based upon the aircraft AGL. So now let's turn our attention to the terrain level of detail first. At the top, we can enter an AGL level, a level of detail level. We also have a save button. We have an add data point button and we have a remove data point button. Now one thing to know about removing data points is that you do not want to delete your zero AGL data point. This particular data point is very important for the application to work properly. First, let me show you how to change a data point's information. All you need to do is to double click on the data point and it will populate the information here. If you want to change the level of detail, we can highlight. Just change the level of detail and then hit the save button. Now you will see the 2000 AGL data point has changed to 155. Similar, if we want to add a data point, we can go to the AGL, add the AGL level that we want to create a data point for, add the terrain level of detail, and then hit the plus icon to add the data point. Over on the right hand side, the object level of detail works the exact same way. Okay, so before you start creating 5,000 different data points, hold up, wait a minute. We first need to think back as to why we have this application in the first place, and that is to help reduce stutters. So every time you have a data point and switch your level of detail, you will always induce a stutter at that particular moment. So if you have a bunch of different data points, Every time you get to that AGL level, you may induce a stutter inside the sim. So if I were going to be creating this profile for a monitor, let me show you how I would do it. First, I would delete that. I will go into the zero AGL. I would turn this to about 70. We're going to hit save. I would then go to the thousand foot AGL mark and I would change this to about 1500. The reason for that is your traffic pattern altitudes are 1,000 foot AGL. So what you don't want to have happen is when you are circling an airport to land or you're in a traffic pattern, if you are teetering right above and below 1,000 feet, you don't want the terrain level of detail to continue to switch, thus creating stutters. I would turn this to 100 and that'll help with performance. Now, one tip here, if you are on a lower end CPU, then you may actually want to turn your 1500 foot down to 70 and hit save. And then your zero, maybe you set this at 50 and then hit save. This way, when you get closer to the ground, it won't make your CPU as limited. Now, for those of you who are flying commercial, you may want to set this up completely different than I have here. You might want to set this to say 2,500 feet. The reason for that is when you're on an ILS approach, you are actually pretty high. You're not at 1,000 feet like you are on a pattern approach. So because of that, you do not want a high terrain level of detail as you're coming in on your approach because that is ultimately going to give you a bunch of stutters. So by increasing this AGL level to 25, that will reduce our level of detail while we are on our approach to help eliminate stutters as we're coming in to land. There's one more section that we need to go over here, and that is the FPS adaptation. What this will do is it will reduce our level of detail if our FPS drops below a certain target. To use this section, we need to click on the limit LOD, and then we need to select a target FPS. 
If your FPS drops below this, it will then start reducing your level of detail. Below this is where we can select how much we want to reduce our level of detail. Now, what you're going to see in these boxes here is 50. That does not mean it's going to reduce it by 50%. That means it's going to reduce it by 50 points. If your level of detail is at 150, it will reduce it to 100. Below this, we can set a minimum level of detail. So this way, it doesn't reduce your level of detail so far that you can't see anything. We also have an option to reduce for an amount of time. So we can set this so it doesn't keep our level of detail reduced the entire flight. Below that, we can also reduce only pairs that equal or higher than a certain number. So if we don't want to reduce our level of detail below a certain pair of numbers here, meaning AGL and level of detail, we can enter that number over here on the right. I would enter number one in that slot. That would also apply over here on the object level of detail as well. Now keep in mind that you do need to start this application for it to operate in Microsoft Flight Simulator. When you click on the X, it will minimize it down to your system tray. So if you want to close out of the application, you must right click and then hit exit. All right, so that's gonna finish us up for today's episode. Thanks everybody for joining us. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below in the comments section. And if the video helped you out today, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching everybody.